Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome to episode 37 of Europa Universalis 4 as Japan. We've almost completed all of the goals that I really wanted to do in this series, which was to actually form Japan, which is one of the hardest things to do uh, when playing as um, Japan. Whether you're playing as the Shogun or one of the Daimyos, it's the, the tricky bit is getting started. We've wiped out Korea and um, we've started the process of westernization. Even my manpower is now starting to recover, which is absolutely excellent. Uh, a great advisor has died. That is our admin advisor. We're going to go with the minus two national unrest guy, definitely. One, because we've just picked up an admin idea group and we want to be able to gain um, as, mu as much uh, admin points as possible. And secondly, we really want to be able to reduce the national unrest. Gain one base tax somewhere randomly. Now, we're losing money. That's just because I've hired a level three advisor. We're losing a lot of money. Um, I'm going to bring down the old army maintenance. Even if we bring the army maintenance down, we are still losing money. We've got a lot of money in the bank, though. I think I'm actually going to keep my uh, maintenance um, up. And the reason for that is I don't actually want to lose... Um, I don't actually want my army maintenance down in case we do get a rebellion. So what we might do is sack one of our other advisors if we've got one that's a little bit expensive. I don't think we necessarily need this Diplo rep guy. Uh, although we've only got rank 3 ones to choose from, which is not very good. He is a little bit expensive for us, but he is reducing the national unrest by quite a bit. So, again, we can take some hit to westernization, which slows us down, or we can lose some legitimacy. We'll have to take the legitimacy hit. Now, the legitimacy hit will also decrease the amount, well, it'll increase the amount of national unrest. So, national unrest, you do get some due to legitimacy. Luckily, our legitimacy is still high enough that it's giving us negative unrest. So, this is actually going to solve a lot of the problems. You guys need to be down in, the, not you... You guys need to be down in there. So we'll carry on, even though we are losing money, we'll carry on as we are for the moment um, losing that money. We're not losing a huge amount of money, so I don't mind too much. We'll allow that to continue. We are below our force limit. Um, we could get some more ships. I don't think I want to worry too much about doing that at the moment. Keep these royal marriages going. That does drop our legitimacy even more, but... It's only by a couple, so it's not too terrible. So how much money are we losing per month? We are losing 17 ducats per month. That'll still mean we can keep going for quite some time. And of course, we can do other things to try and get money as time goes on. Uh, we've got a potential rebel uprising. These Korean separatists, I guess it's mainly... Yeah, Nyongbyon and Huang Hei, and that's mainly going up because we're doing that religious conversion. Not too bothered about that. Might go ahead and just pop the um, general there. So while we're over here, let's have a quick look and think to ourselves, okay, we've got some, um, some natives around. Do we want to potentially attack any of these natives? How much money do they have? Can we take something from you? Uh, Tarascan, what about you guys? Country... Let's have a look. Is there anyone we can go to war with and just take a massive amount of money? You have 21 ducats. That is not so good. Um, Klapanek and... Kichi. Uh, Klapanek has 12 gold. Kichi has 10 gold. Wow, these natives don't have an awful lot. Ming's got a lot of money. Who's got the most money in their treasury right now? In, like, the entire game? Me. I have more money than anybody. Uh, followed by Mutapa, then Wu, then Ming. None of the natives have a lot of money now. They all seem to have had their treasury wrecked, which is a bit of a shame. Um, there is potentially uh, Mutapa. Which is... Difficult to get at. I mean, they are Africa. We could go down there. They're quite big. What's their tech group and everything? They are Indian tech group. Level 13. Yeah, they're probably not worth fighting. I was just thinking if we could do any of those sort of um, BS wars just to get ourselves some additional income. At least we've stopped reinforcing now anyway, so that's going to save us some money. Producing cocoa. 
Once we get rid of the potential rebel uprising, we'll actually be able to reduce our um, army maintenance quite safely, I think. I'd like this unrest to go away down here. Of course, I could do that just by increasing the autonomy. Where's most of that unrest coming from? It's the separatism. Do you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it. The unrest is going down, but we don't want it to fire at all. Let's get rid of it completely and say, okay, go away unrest. We don't want you. We will continue to convert some of these provinces over because the lack of religious unity also hurts our um, national unrest. Let's recall that diplomat. So now we'll go in and we'll actually reduce down our um, army maintenance a little. We won't reduce it all the way, but we will save some money. So truce is ending. Recall our diplomats. Another great advisor has died. Lost to CB. Which advisor was that? Was the Diplo guy. Well, at least we've got a rank 1 guy we can take now. So let's go ahead and take that guy. So now we have a rank 1 Diplo guy. We're making money again now. Barely, but we are making money. So that is good. No provincial unrest at all at the moment. Which is a lovely thing to see. Now, unfortunately, it does mean we have to spend a little while not going to war. Because to be quite honest, we can't afford the war exhaustion. We don't have the manpower. We don't have the money. And we can't really afford to take on any more unrest. Yep, yeah, Ming doesn't like me. Not an awful lot that we can do with that. let us uh, We'll deal with the explorer in a moment. We'll continue to um, suck up to our big neighbours. Especially those who are enemies of Ming. Because we want to keep our we want to keep some strong allies at the moment. So uh, Ming's enemies is uh, myself, Shun, uh, Wu. What are things like with Wu? Our relationship's not too bad, but we'll keep improving relations there. Let's go and deal with the explorer then. You probably don't have an awful lot of places you can go. Let's go and explore the waters of Brazil. Keep you looking around there. Probably be able to grab another military tech soon as well. So as you can see, we are still making Monarch Points, but it's just slow. And it's slow because we're spending five from each category every month to westernise. But we want to do that. We want to westernise as quickly as we possibly can. If we have a look in there now, you can see that bar is getting there. So we're already at 16%. So we can lose 100 admin power or we can lose some westernisation. That is really annoying. We'll, we'll take the admin hit. I was hoping we could save the admin power up because I wanted... And isn't that typical? <laughs> I was just about to say I wanted to save the admin power up because I was hoping that we could go and get our next um, uh, idea in the idea group. And then our leader goes and dies. And we've actually got a terrible leader. He's a 4-3-0. Um, the air's not too bad. That did give us a stability drop. We can't afford to increase the stability there, so we're not going to increase the stability there. We will have to wait. We're only making three military power a month now, which is okay. That's that's not too bad. We are still making military power, so we're all right. Uh, it does actually tell us the cap there. There we go. Look, uh, 1,598. So it's taking that as 60% of 999 because, obviously, there's always rounding issues. So there's our cap, 1598. It will tell you that for any nation if you mouse over. So how much is it going to cost us to go up to stability 3? Probably quite a lot. 200. That is an awful lot to do. But do we have any unrest at the moment? No, national unrest. So we still don't have any unrest anywhere. So I don't think we need to go up to stability 3. But it would certainly be nice if we could get the first idea group. That religious unity would help. Not as much as local traditions would help. So there is some useful stuff in there. Again, I don't think going land leader manoeuvre is technically all that idea. Although, uh, we could theoretically get the next two ideas and get land maintenance modifier, which would make our troops cheaper. I think we might actually do that. I mean, we as far as tech goes, we're further ahead in military tech than anything else. We're still behind the times. But I don't think that's a massive... See, a little bit of da extra damage on infantry fire is good. I think we will actually take those two ideas. 
Currently at the moment, we're making 0 0.09 ducats. If we go and take this, because that will give us minus 10% to our land maintenance modifier, um, we're now making 1.67 ducats. So instantly, we've made the maintenance of our armies 10% cheaper. So now we'll actually save about 3 ducats a month on full maintenance, because when they're at full maintenance, I think there are about 30 ducats a month to maintain. So that makes things a little bit cheaper. Um, so one nice thing that you are going to be able to do in Cossacks, I'll just talk about that a little bit. I'm having an issue at the moment where I don't really have uh, anything for my diplomats to do, which is not technically true because I could be fabricating claims and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, where do we want to try and grab? Gaizu, I think we've already got. Nyingyan. Yeah, let's go and get all of these. Um, what One thing that you're actually able to do in the Cossacks, and it is very dependent on taking the espionage idea group. Uh, but when you take the espionage ideas, one of the things in that idea group, I actually can't remember which one it is. I think they've changed it completely. It may be the so discontent one, but either way, one of the things that they've put in there allows you to send your diplomat to another country... Basically, as a spy, works well, a little bit like the way stealing technology does in um, Civ Five, almost. But the way it works is, if you send your diplomat to another nation as a spy, if they are two technology levels or more above you in a specific category, you will gain an extra one, uh, extra one monarch point per month. So, if you send if you send a diplomat to a nation that has a technological lead by two in admin, diplo, and military, you'll gain an extra one point per month in each one of them. You can send people to multiple countries at once. It doesn't stack, unfortunately, but uh, that's uh, so I've been made aware that might not necessarily be true, but that's what I've been told. Um, but that's really good because it means if you've got uh, if you've got diplomats that are not doing anything, you can send them away as uh, a spy and gain some extra monarch points from them, which is a really good thing. So we can get some noble regiments, we can get some local autonomy, or we can lose some diplo power. We'll just take the local autonomy. Autonomy and things like that are going to be a complete and utter mess while we are uh, westernising. So we just have to remember that that is going to be an issue. So as I can't really go to war or do an awful lot while we're westernising, I'll probably talk a little bit more about Cossacks. I will be doing some videos uh, detailing the differences, and I'll probably do some more tutorials, and then we'll go ahead and we'll actually do a game uh, with Cossacks. Uh, one of the big things they have changed is the New World. I know New World randomization has been in since um, Conquest of Paradise, I think it is, that the DLC, one of the very first ones, like the, the first or second one that came out for EU4. Not many people used to use it, though, because the way that it used to create the random New World was always really, really bad, and they've done a lot of work with it now to make a much more interesting New World. And... Um, all of the provinces now have their own fantasy names, and uh, yeah, I think that could be quite interesting. We get some react reactionary regiments. Where is Tosa? That is down here. Well, what we are going to do is we are going to increase our army maintenance. We are going to give you the leader. And we are going to move you down to Tosa before that event pops. So this is one of the things that you get with westernization. You do get a lot of these um, reactionaries that pop up. And they can break a country apart. So this is why you don't want to pause westernization. Because these events can still fire. We'll let these guys get one more tick. And then we will accept. There we go. Got some morale recovery. It's only nine uh, regiments. And of course, we were there first, so they get the terrain penalty. There we go. Reaction is gone. We're losing money now, of course, because we're reinforcing. We'll get our guys back. Well, we'll stick them there. I think they should be safe. So this is always the thing. Do we drop the maintenance or not? Truce is expiring. Truce has expired with Ming. It's increased our settler chance there. So yeah, the random new world, that is going to be something that's very interesting. You've also got the option of how you react to natives. At the moment, 
when you're colonizing, you actually get pop-ups every now and then that give you the option to either sort of kill the natives or help the natives. And you get things like increased settler chance and more less native ferocity and stuff like that. Well, this is going to be an option, like a sort of a policy that you can set for your entire nation, how you deal with uh, natives when you're colonizing. So you can either leave it sort of set to, to the middle, um, which gives you a slight increase to your um, settler increase chance, but it also means that you might get attacked by natives, or you can set it to be really, really friendly with the natives. If you're really, really friendly with the natives, then you basically, you don't get any increased settler um, chance. Your colonization becomes quite slow, but... Uh, I don't need to do anything about that. Uh, your colonization becomes quite slow, but you never get attacked by natives, which I think is absolutely awesome, which means no longer when you're colonizing places like this do you need to worry about sending uh, a guy across or, you know, a regiment to protect the colony because you can just set it on to being really friendly with the natives. And the good thing about that, of course, is it means that um, when the colony becomes a city, you will get the bonus of having a high native population because that used to affect, like, the base tax uh, originally um so that's going to be quite a nice thing that they're adding or you can set it to be hyper aggressive where you basically kill all the natives you'll get lots of uprisings but it also drastically increases your settler chance so that's one of the nice things uh, but one of the main things that they are adding that i'm really itching um to, to get my hands on is the ability to set provinces as provinces of interest so if you've got a core or a claim on something, you can set that as a province of interest, which basically says to other people, I want that province, I'm going after that province, don't you dare fabricate a claim on it, don't you dare take it. Especially because if you end up going to war again, say I wanted to go, uh, I wanted, um, say I wanted this province here, right, Hetuala, and let's say that um, John Zhu weren't my march, let's say they're independent, but they're my ally. I could get a claim or a core on Hetuala, and I could set this as a province of interest and say, I want Hetuala, which would tell my ally, don't make any claims on it. And if we go to war together, I want that province. I expect that province in the peace deal. Um, some of the other things that used to be behind the scenes stuff with the AI, such as the amount of trust you have and things like favor, that's now going to be transparent. So you will actually be able to see how much trust the AI has of you and exactly why they have that much trust. Uh, so there's going to be some nice stuff with that. Um, we'll just grant the autonomy. So basically, you will be able to curry enough favour with an ally, if you've been allied with them for long enough, to be able to say, look, we've been allies for long enough now, you owe me, you're going to join my war. Uh, you can also tell them to prepare for war. So you can say to an ally, look, I'm going to declare war. And in, for the next two years, that ally will increase their army maintenance, build up an army and avoid going to war with anybody else. And it also makes them more likely to join your offensive war. So we've all seen those times where you, you want an ally to join you in a war, but by the time you come to attack, your allies either broke, got no army, or they're in another war. So you can stop them from doing that, which is really good. Um, prestige is dropping. We'll take the extra prestige there. We'll go ahead and fabricate some uh, more claims on Ming, because why not? Um, Shenyang we could go and get. I'm just trying to get stuff that's along the coast. It's unlikely we are going to be going to war with Ming, but it's just so I've got something to do. Not sure you will have enough range to be able to circumnavigate the globe, but do you know what? I'm going to give it a go when we finish this mission. It's not like there's an awful lot else that we can do. Let's get ourselves back over here to Japan. So how's the westernization going at the moment? Where is the old um, button? It's over here. We're 29% of the way. We're almost a third of the way through. Now, it can't go any faster than this, unfortunately. We're only gaining five for each category per month, which is the most you can have. Total is 3,200. Um, and it says it's based on your development. And I can believe that. How do we find our total development? I can never remember where you find your total development. It's probably under here. At least I thought it was under here. Colonial range, global... Where is it? Why can I never remember where this is? Economy. There we go. 718. Our total development is 718. So I wonder how that works out to the 3,200. I assume it's a base figure and then it's multiplied by 
the total development. Not entirely sure what the maths are behind that, but if we'd have been a smaller country, if we'd have had fewer provinces or provinces with lower development, we would have been able to westernise more quickly. This is why when you get one province nations that are like natives, they can westernise a lot more quickly than bigger countries can. Uh, a province has become self-sustaining, a colony, that is this one. Let's go ahead and go over here. You don't have many natives either. We're very close to getting ourselves a colonial nation over here. We'll be able to get that formed soon. Might actually bring a little bit of money in our way. Who knows? So we're currently making money. Manpower is also recovering nicely. Again, local autonomy, or we could lose admin power. I'm just going to take the local autonomy. I mean, local autonomy does hurt a little bit because you, of course, end up losing some tax, you lose some manpower, uh, you lose some production. But it would be nice to try and get that religious unity thing. Currently, our religious unity is only 89%. And we can't even begin to flip Brunei over because of the religious zeal they have there. Um, Sunni, non-accepted culture, and uh, development. We would be able to get that eventually. We could get some more power for our missionaries. How long are you going to take? You're quite slow at the moment. But you'll get there. But yeah, get, getting that extra 25% religious unity would mean we are constantly at 100%. And that would decrease our uh, stability costs as well. So, 12 noble regiments or lose westernization progress. Um, Chikuzen. Which is... where exactly? Oh, it's another one of our own provinces. That's fine. But we will have to sort that out in the next video, I think. I'll just put the army maintenance, maintenance up now so that I don't forget. Uh, so, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are still enjoying EU4. If you are, please do consider giving the video a like. And I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye for now.